Hi everyone, today I'm going to color this black and white photo of mine, which is of a 1950s, mid 1950s Chevrolet pickup truck, which I shot when I was on my road trip, California road trip with my daughter Katie, and we drove from uh, the humble Redwood State Park towards the ocean, and this was at Hales Grove. So I'm going to color this piece with oils. The photo was printed on matte photo paper with a light shed at 18 by 12 inches. I'm going to color it with my Marshall Photo Oils, and these are the colors I'm going to use. Fresh new tube of burnt sienna, sky blue, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. I'm going to need a lot of oxide green. Carmine Extra Strong, which I'm going to use with the truck, probably mix it with either orange or yellow. And believe it or not, but also flesh. The flesh is actually like, like a reddish brown, which I think will look good uh, on the house. I'm going to use the cotton rounds and Q-tips to add the colors to the photo. Typically, I start with the largest surfaces. So in this case, that's all the greens of the, of the trees in the background. I'm putting the color on the large surfaces using a cotton round. It's okay to go over the lines here and there because it's oil, it takes a very long time to dry and it's still easily removable later on, even after a couple of days. It's easier to, to put the paint on, go over the line, so to say, and then remove those areas later than to try to not go over the lines. That takes usually longer. I'm using a lot of the same color right now, but later I'm going to add some, some, some spots of yellow and maybe orange and brown here and there, just to break up the color a little bit. Sometimes I completely make up the colors, but in this case I'm, I'm going to color it pretty much the way the scene actually looked like. Sometimes I color the, the trees in like fall colors, even though I shot it in the summer or spring. I'm wearing gloves because the oil paint is, is slightly toxic and I would get it all over my hands but because I'm not using brushes, I'm using cotton rounds and Q-tips.
So I'm adding a little bit of yellow to this younger tree in the front. I added the color and now I'm uh, wiping it off a little bit, blending it with the green that I put on earlier. So now I'm adding burnt sienna to the foreground. I like to put it on relatively thick and then later I will remove it from the areas where I want it a little thinner, a little lighter. It's better to do the larger surfaces first, because if you do the details first, um, then later when you uh, put on the large surfaces pretty roughly, uh, there's quite a, a, a large chance that you remove the paint from the detailed areas, and you have to start all over. That spot here, I'm leaving it free for now so I can hold on to it and not move the photo all over the place. It's nice to add some different colors to cer certain areas, to the larger areas, just to break it up a little, so it's not just one solid color. So here I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the ground and blending it in.
sending some blue to the sky. Here I'm adding a little bit more blue than what really was at the scene. Uh, the sky was more overcast at the time, but because it looks so white, it invites itself to add some blue to it. It's okay to add that blue color over the leaves in the background because you don't see it anyway because it's so dark. And I don't have to worry about removing that later either. When photos are larger than, say, 12 by 8 inches, like this one is 18 by 12, I mount them on a stiffer backboard. This one was actually mounted on, on gator board. When it's 12 by 8 or smaller, I just make sure I have some kind of support lying on the table, but, but I don't mount them onto those boards. I'm using a clean cotton round now to uh, smooth it out a little, make it a little lighter. I'm going to color the truck now, so I'm going to mix that uh, carmine with some orange. I'm just mixing it with a Q-tip on the palette. And just brushing it on with a Q-tip. Again, I'm putting it on pretty thick. And after this, I will remove it where I want it lighter.
I did a Google search to find out what pickup truck this was. It, it did have like a Chevy look to me, so I, I looked for Chevy trucks throughout the years. And then I ran into some images from the 50s that looked like this truck. And it's either a 55 or a 56. This was the first model where they had these curved windshields. So now I'm smoothing it out a little more and uh, adding some highlights here and there with a cotton round. And now we'll add a little bit of rust here and there using the burnt sienna. It also gives the truck a little um, more depth. It looks a little flat right now. But adding that darker burnt sienna will add some, some shade and some depth. This is also where I slightly deviate from the original scene because I believe the original truck did not have this amount of rust on it.
The nice thing about Q-tips in combination with oil and matte photo paper is you can use the Q-tips both to add and remove paint. And same applies to the cotton round. So I thought the, um, this little trunk was a little too light, so I'm adding a little more color. It's time for the flash color. I'm gonna paint in the colors of the of the house. I add a little bit too much here, but I'll remove that later. This is a chemically developed photo, as I said earlier, printed with a light jet. Unfortunately, you cannot use these types of oils well on inkjet paper. Because the, the problem is you cannot remove it nicely from that type of paper. Whereas with this, a true matte photo paper, uh, you can, I could even wipe all the paint off if I wanted to um, after like a day or two. With matte inkjet paper, the paint just sucks into the, the paper and you cannot remove it anymore. And it's hard to control how much you put on it too. That's why with matte inkjet paper I like to use I like to use pastels there you have a lot more control over how much you put on Now we're mixing some of the, the burnt sienna and the yellow to color the roof. Remember this is still regular, well, not regular oil paint, it's like, it's, it's oil paint but thinner. Um, and you can mix it 
just like any other pain. It's more like, like a yellow ochre. And then in the front here, I'm adding a little bit more of the burnt sienna. Now I'm really touching up the image and shouldn't forget this part here that I left free for the towards the end. So I'm filling up this space now. to break up the greens of the trees a little bit more so I'm adding some yellow here and a little bit of orange And it's finished now. Uh, it's going to take three, four days to dry. And then I'll frame it.